Whether they feature a deal with the devil or a two-faced scientist, these classic horror movies don't need dialogue to keep you up at night. It's the Golem of Prague. Legendary defender of the Jewish people. The concept of the Golem has been a popular part of Jewish folklore for hundreds of years and it still endures today. The legend that has proven to be the most widespread centers around Judah Lo ben Bezalel, a 16th century rabbi who resided in the city of Prague. Legend has it that Rabbi Lo created the Golem to protect the Prague ghetto from persecution. This is the tale presented in the 1920 silent horror film called The Golem, How He Came Into the World. The film itself was actually the third in a trilogy, serving as a prequel for a larger narrative, but the other two have been lost to time. Sadly, How He Came Into the World is the only one of Paul Wegener's Gollum stories that you can still watch today. Just as it's described in the legend, Rabbi Lowe, predicting tragedy for the people of Prague, looks to craft a way to protect his people. He sculpts the titular Gollum out of humble clay and gives him life so he can fulfill his role as a protector. The Golem holds an important place in film history, given its status as the earliest feature-length film to feature a man-made monster over a decade before Frankenstein came out in 1931. It's impossible to talk about silent horror cinema without mentioning the German Expressionism movement of the early 1900s. The style, most prevalent from the 1910s to the 1930s, had an emphasis on representing feelings more so than reality. This was often expressed through painted dreamlike visuals, which utilized heavily distorted shadows and bizarre angular shapes. The German Expressionist masterpiece, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, has been hailed by many film historians as one of the first true horror films. Our protagonist is Francis, who regales a stranger with the tale of an ordeal that he and his fiancée Jane had faced. He tells the story of how he witnessed a bizarre public spectacle courtesy of a mysterious doctor by the name of Caligari. The sinister doctor presents a gaunt somnambulist, or sleepwalker, named Cesare, who can seemingly predict the future at Caligari's command. It's soon revealed that Cesare is a murderous monster under Caligari's control, and Jane is his next target. Everything in this world, from the windows to the streets to the shadows, has a surreal and distorted quality to it. Despite being over 100 years old, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari is still an effectively atmospheric and unsettling watch. Now, you all know the plot to Jekyll and Hyde, but you don't know the story. Robert Louis Stevenson's 1886 novella, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, is often regarded as a seminal work of horror fiction. Its influence has wormed its way into countless other works, from comedies like Me, Myself and Irene, to comic books like The Incredible Hulk. The story of Jekyll and his sinister alter ego Hyde has been put to screen a number of times, but one of the most famous takes on the iconic story is the production released in 1920 starring John Barrymore as the dueling personalities. While this version isn't a fully accurate adaptation of the original story, its terrifying take on Mr. Hyde more than makes up for it. John Barrymore's portrayal is nothing short of disturbing, aided by his naturally expressive face working in tandem with some mild makeup enhancements. It was so disturbing at the time that, according to an archived review of the film in Photoplay magazine, many were worried that his performance would prove unhealthy for expecting mothers. There have been many other versions of Stevenson's haunting tale of science gone wrong, but this early silent version still stands out as one of the finest. This next selection of silent screams comes from Sweden in the early 1920s. The Phantom Carriage, directed by Victor Herström, is based on the 1912 novel Thy Soul Shall Bear Witness by Selma Lagerlöf. This eerie experience follows a boozer named David Holm who, after an ill-timed fight, dies just as the clock strikes 12 on New Year's Eve. Now, he must accompany death in his carriage and collect the souls of the dead for the following year. David is also shown key moments from his life, certain key decisions that he definitely could have made differently. At its core, The Phantom Carriage is a fantastical morality tale that utilizes horror elements to convey captivating themes and ideas. It's no surprise that the film has been praised for its influence on other classic movies. If you're looking for haunting visuals and plenty of lingering questions, definitely take a ride on The Phantom Carriage. 
Hexen is another example of Swedish horror and a prime example of how early filmmakers would try to push the envelope. This movie is a bizarre beast as it switches between fictional narrative tidbits and documentary-style segments, both focused on the facts and folklore concerning witchcraft. The documentary segments are quite slow and feature a lot of pointing, but contain some interesting facts regarding witches and Satan worship. These pair nicely with the narrative portions, which feature dramatizations containing horrific visuals that still hold up today. These include grotesque-looking demons and even a depiction of Satan himself, played by the film's director Benjamin Christensen. To have this level of rampantly satanic imagery back in the 1920s was quite the artistic gamble, but it seems that the risk paid off. 100 years later, the film is often regarded as a stylistic trendsetter, especially through its distinctive hybrid format. Any film that uses documentary segments to further a fictional narrative owes its existence to Hexen. We're seeing Nosferatu. Yeah, I don't know why I'm going, but I'm just in a weird headspace today. Which is exactly how you want to see German Expressionism. Certain horror films are more than just memorable, instead achieving a level of influence that can last a century and definitely longer. This is the case of F.W. Murnau's 1922 picture Nosferatu, which features one of the earliest on-screen depictions of a vampire. To this day, many critics still hail Nosferatu as a legendary classic of the horror genre, and it isn't hard to see why. The handsome vampire was turned into a wretched ghoul called Count Orlok, played by Max Schreck. Nosferatu follows Thomas Hutter, who travels to Transylvania to secure the signature of Count Orlok for a real estate deal. Soon enough, Hutter's wife finds herself in Orlok's crosshairs, meaning that Hutter must race against the clock to save his beloved. Nosferatu is a true chiller in every sense of the word. From Count Orlok rising from his coffin to his sinister shadow being cast on the walls, this film is loaded with unforgettable imagery. To this day, many critics still hail Nosferatu as a legendary classic of the horror genre, and it isn't hard to see why. No list of silent horror classics would be truly complete without an appearance or two by the man of a thousand faces, Lon Chaney. Cheney's now legendary physical language and facial expressions originated out of familial necessity. As both of his birth parents were deaf, his command of physical performance, along with his skill with theatrical makeup, helped to propel him into the limelight. Cheney soon became best known for his on-screen portrayals of physically deformed, often misunderstood misfits, like Quasimodo in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. This film, while not the first, stands as one of the more famous adaptations of Victor Hugo's famous 1831 novel. For such an early film production, everything in it feels grand in scale, especially the sets which all perfectly capture the film setting of 15th century France. But of course, the major highlight of the film is Cheney as Quasimodo, who takes advantage of every moment he's on screen. The Hunchback of Notre Dame is still a silent cinematic classic, and the film that helped to propel Lon Chaney to silver screen stardom. Long before The Phantom of the Opera was belting out melodramatic show tunes on Broadway, he was terrifying moviegoers in 1925. In another one of his iconic roles, Lon Chaney plays the titular Phantom, a disfigured musical genius who resides in the decrepit sewers below the Paris Opera House. He falls madly in love with Christine Daae, an understudy turned starlet who he begins puppeteering from the shadows. This take on the tale is truly spellbinding. From its sinister musical arrangements to Cheney's awe-inspiring performance, equal parts horrific and heartbreaking. Underneath his twisted appearance, Cheney conveys a tangible pain and rage through his horrific makeup and prosthetics. From start to finish, the film, much like The Phantom himself, has you under its gothic spell. Without Rupert Julian's adaptation of Gaston Leroux's story, many of the tropes and visuals we associate with The Phantom of the Opera probably wouldn't exist. Japan has always had an affinity for truly resonant and out-of-the-box horror. Even going back many decades, terrifying creations from the land of the rising sun often reflect fears and paranoias that apply heavily to their native cultural influences. No film made before World War II is a better example of this than director Teinosuke Kinugasa's A Page of Madness. 
1926 movie concerns a husband who has taken a janitorial job at a mental institution to remain close to his institutionalized wife. But as his employment continues, the lines between fantasy and reality begin to erode. With its twisted angles and haunting imagery involving masks, a page of madness will most definitely be creeping into your nightmares if you watch it late at night. Kinugasa's masterpiece is a one-of-a-kind experience that's definitely worthy of all the praise that's been heaped on it over the years. Oh, oh you know the foul story? No. Dozens of iconic characters have made deals with the devil, but none are more influential than Faust. Directed by F.W. Murnau of Nosferatu fame, this adaptation of the German legend shares the same expressionist style as its predecessor. The story of Faust concerns a wager between the demon Mephisto and an archangel. The demon bets the angel that he can corrupt even the most righteous man's soul. They decide on Faust, a man willing to dabble in infernal arts in order to help others. Led to a crossroads by a mystical book, Faust, Mephisto, and Lucifer come to an agreement. Faust tries to use his newfound abilities to aid people, but his satanic affiliations isolate him further. As time goes on, his desire for power and glory corrupts him and the world around him. Given its use of satanic iconography, Faust is loaded with surreal and chilling visuals, the most memorable of which features the devil towering over a small village as he spreads a deadly plague. 